Looking at the last two sections, what we're going to do is we're going to start talking about electric current and those magnetic fields. Some of the things specifically that we'll look at is we're going to be describing the relationship that exists between electric current and magnetic fields. We're going to identify the characteristics of an electric circuit. When we go ahead and start talking about electricity, Hans Christian Oersted found a relationship that existed between electricity and magnetism. What he found out was that whenever an electric current flowed, it had an effect on a compass. He needed to find out what relationship existed and how that electric current and why specifically uh, it was affecting magnetism. You learned back in the chemistry section that electrons and protons had a charge. Uh, the electron being specifically negatively charged and that proton being positively charged. This charge was called an electric charge. Electricity, when these charged particles move, what they do is they cause an electric current. Electric current is just going to be the flow of charges through any conducting material. Current is going to be measured in amperes, amps or A, uh, which is a measure of the rate at which particles pass a point in one second. So what we're saying is the number of particles passing a point in a given amount of time, kind of like frequency when we talked about waves. Hans Christian Orsted's connection was this. Whenever a charged particle was moving, electric current created a magnetic field. So anytime you have a wire where electricity is passing through it, some magnetic field is going to be created because of these moving charges. Remember back to the magnet and the iron filings that we had around a magnet. The lines curved around the magnet from the North Pole to the South Pole. Remember that when electricity flows, it's going in a certain pattern. Just like when we talked about the domains of a magnet, they were lined up also. And that's the reason why charges flowing in a certain direction created a slight magnetic field. A magnet has electrons spinning in one direction. As electricity flows, it flows too in one direction, creating that magnetic field. So kind of the picture that I have uh, up here is when you look at an electric current moving, that electric current moving through a wire caused that pattern to exist. So when you look at this picture here, they're showing some iron pilings. Um, you have a charge that's going to be flowing up through that uh, wire and what it did is it created a pattern showing you kind of like what you saw with the magnet uh, itself with those charges flowing around. Electric circuits. All electric currents must have some sort of circuit to follow. What is an electric circuit? An electric circuit is just going to be that complete key thing here is closed. Closed loop path that electric current's going to follow. Electric current can't jump the gap. What it has to do is it has to have that complete closed loop path for current to follow. In order for an electric circuit to be complete, I say that you have to have four components. Number one is going to be an electrical source, uh, batteries, outlets, uh, generators, things like that. Number two, you've got to have some device that's going to be using that current, uh, whether it be a computer, TV, cell phone, things like that. Number three, you have to have wires that are going to carry that current. Carry the current from the electric source uh, to the device that's being used. And then the last thing I say that you have to have is you have to be able to turn it on and off. Okay, some sort of switch. Uh, when you look at page 631, what it does is it shows you a circuit diagram. Uh, on the following slide, I'm going to show you a circuit diagram. A little bit different, but specifically pretty much the same thing. What you have is you have a battery here. Here's my positive end. And what you're going to do is you're going to have charges that leave that positive end flowing through that wire. All of a sudden, it gets over here to this light bulb. Uh, but nothing done yet. But once it goes into that light bulb, going into that light bulb, that's the appliance or the resistor that's being used. Light bulb lights up, leaves the other side, going through the switch where we can turn it on and off, and all of a sudden comes back to that negative end. And those charges continue to flow or that current continues to flow. If I go ahead and I lift that switch up there, what I've done is I've opened it. Because notice, metal here, metal here. If I lift that switch up, now there's a gap. And current wouldn't flow, and therefore the light bulb would go ahead and turn off. Continuing talking about electricity, uh, if you remember what we said is electricity has to have free moving particles, or that current is going to be charges that flow through. Those charges that allow electricity to pass are going to be conductors. Any metals are going to be good conductors because they have lots of valence electrons, lots of valence electrons, meaning that those electrons are free 
to move around. Insulators, they do not move charges because they don't have those free-flowing electrons. And if we don't have the free-flowing electrons, electricity cannot pass through insulators. Resistance. As charges flow through a circuit, they pass through resistors. And this is the thing that's going to end up using that electric current. That's the computer. That's the telephone. Uh, that's the cell phone. That's the iPod, iPad, uh, TV, things like that. Those are going to be your resistors. What is resistance or a resistor? Well, just think of what resist means. Resist means to not allow. What it's going to be is it's going to be the opposition to the movement of charges flowing through a material. What I like to refer to it as is the friction of electricity. Okay. Resistance is a lot like friction. As those particles move, they're interacting with one another. They're striking one another. They're hitting one another. And any time two things come into contact with one another, that's resistance. And that's the reason why wires slightly heat up, because those particles are coming into contact with one another. Knowing that resistance is bad, scientists have created some materials that have uh, very low resistance at uh, very low temperatures. Remember what we said, as temperature goes down, those particles don't come into contact with one another. Lower temperatures create lower resistance. Some particles, though, or some substances, have absolutely no resistance at all, and those things are going to be called superconductors. It's any material that has no electrical resistance at or below a certain critical temperature. Superconductors, the reason why uh, they're so good is they don't lose electricity uh, to friction. Basically, those particles don't come into contact with one another, uh, giving you absolutely no resistance at all. And the nice thing about superconductors is they reduce electrical cost, or lower temperatures reduce electrical cost as current flows from the power companies to your home. The last thing we want to talk about is we want to talk about electromagnets. And we've really already identified it identified it as some sort of magnet that operates off of electricity. Any time current is running, a magnetic field is created, and we already discussed that and showed that to you, uh, looking at those magnetic field lines that uh, existed through that uh, picture that was shown earlier. By turning the current on and off, what we can do is we can turn that magnetic field on and off. The magnetic field around a current carrying wire forms a cylinder around that wire. When the wire is twisted into a loop, the magnetic field lines get bunched up, and if they get bunched up, it causes that magnetic field to be stronger. Uh, if you look at figure 22 on page 636, uh, it kind of shows that to you. Uh, I've done that in this slide right here. Uh, don't worry about the equation. What I want you to notice is instead of the current flowing uh, straight through a wire, notice this wire is coiled. But look specifically within. Look how bunched up those lines are. And the closer those lines are, the more magnetic field or the stronger the magnetic field is that's going to be created because those particles are going to be closer together. The more loops a wire has, the larger the magnetic field. By coiling the wire, the magnetic field is stronger uh, in the center of the coil, as shown on that previous illustration. The two ends of the coils were, are going to be acting just like your poles of a magnet. This is going to be called a solenoid. It's a current-carrying coil of wire with many loops. If a magnetic material is placed inside it, like a nail or anything that is iron-bearing, you're going to find out that that magnetic field becomes even stronger. By being able to turn that electricity on and off, what you've created is an electromagnet. An electromagnet is just going to be a solenoid, that's that coiled wire, with a ferromagnetic core that can be turned on and off. The overall magnetic field can be hundreds of thousands uh, or hundreds or thousands of times stronger than the magnetic field produced just alone by that current. For this reason, that's the reason why electromagnets are used in junkyards, because again, they can pick up many uh, hundreds of thousands of times uh, or apply more force to objects. There's four ways to increase the strength of an electromagnet. Notice these are ways to increase. Number one, what we can do is we can increase the current in that solenoid. Number two, we can add more loops of wire to the solenoid. Uh, instead of going from, say, 10 coils, maybe we have 15, 20 coils. Number three, we can push those coils closer together, okay? bunch them up just a little bit more. Number four, what we can do is we can use a stronger ferromagnetic core uh, for the core, uh, something that has slightly more magnetic properties for it. 
Your assignment is going to be to read pages 628 through 638. I want you to do questions 1 through 4 on page 633 and also questions 1 through 4 on page 638.